All right, so it's Tuesday, it's lift day for me, and as promised, I'm back with a little more deloading discussion um, that's gonna take place just throughout my lift day. I'm um, getting started with some sumo style deadlifts. I'm not taking a super wide stance on these. Um, I'm trying to get some leg bend and I'm trying to get some good range of motion. True sumos, you take a very wide stance to decrease the range of motion. Um, and like I said, I'm trying to keep the, keep the sumo stance but get a decent range of motion going. So I'm just gonna take off and hit a set of sumo deadlifts to start up this lift day deload. Once again, the deload is about keeping things light, keeping things lower intensity. Um, and one thing, one thing that I really, really find myself doing when I when I do my deload workouts is, you know, I loaded up 185 on the barbell today for my deadlifts. But as I'm loading it up, it seems like I'm asking myself, you know, why aren't you going a little bit heavier? Is that really going to be enough for you? And then I just have to talk to myself and convince myself that I'm not supposed to be going heavy. Um, that's plenty of weight for me. And I just have to get in there and just put the weight on there, promise myself not to touch it, not to add any more weight, and just get over that fact that I need to go really hard during this workout. I guess to me the fact that I really want to go hard with it um, just shows that you know I, I really love to lift heavy and I really love to push myself in the gym. So if you have that problem, just know that it's not a bad thing. Know that it just means that you have a little bit of passion for this game and you really like to push yourself in the gym and you really like to work hard. I'd much rather have the problem of wanting to go you know, to my limit as opposed to wanting to go a little bit on the light side. That's not me and that's probably not you either because if you're into bodybuilding or powerlifting or anything like that, um, you just cannot have that mentality if you're gonna be successful. So. Let's get going on that next set, get that fired up, and just keep moving forward through lift day today. Okay, so I got that set out of the way. I'm just gonna take a little bit um, of a breather here and uh, let it simmer before I get into that third set. All right, so I'll finish up with some more deadlifts for the day. It's time to move on to something different. I'm gonna keep hitting my posterior chain, hamstrings, glutes. Um, and spinal erectors with some Romanian deadlifts. All right, so I'm lined up for some Romanian deadlifts, not straight leg deadlifts, not conventional deadlifts. These are Romanians. You'll see I'm gonna put a little bit of bend in my knees, and I'm really gonna focus on a nice hamstring stretch. Um, really focus on squeezing my glutes forward, stretching the hamstrings at the bottom of the movement, thinking about them when I reverse the movement and lift the weight. And I'm really gonna focus on keeping my back in a nice tight arch the entire time. So my knees are loose, loosely bent. Good tension down the back side of my body. My hips are literally moving back and forth.
So I'm editing the videos last night uh, for parts one and two of the deload series and I pretty much realized that I didn't actually go over the symptoms that let you know that it's time for you to deload. So I just want to go over a few of those symptoms right now, talk about those and just get those out in the open, let you know about them and you know you can assess yourself and see if you're going through any of those symptoms and if it's time for you to take a deload. So the symptom that's probably the easiest to diagnose is going to be the fact that you're losing strength in the gym. When you go into the gym, you feel um, like the weights just weigh a ton. You know, 135 on a deadlift feels heavy. Um, 135 on a bench feels like a rock. Those are symptoms that your nervous system has had enough. Your body just cannot provide the signal that it needs to your muscles to get them to fire properly. And that's a, that's a big symptom of being overtrained. So symptom number one is when you go into the gym and the weights feel heavy and you just feel like it's not time for you to be there. Um, you're moving slow. You feel like you want your body to work efficiently and as usual, but no matter how hard you want it to work, it's just not going to fire properly. It's just not going to give you um, that power that you're asking of it. And that's symptom number one. Symptom number two has to do with your sleeping patterns. You know your regular sleeping patterns, whether you're a sound sleeper or a poor sleeper, you know your sleeping patterns. And if those become disrupted, if you have more trouble sleeping, um, chances are you're a little bit overtrained. Now I don't actually know um, the reasoning behind that, but it's pretty well known that if you're overtrained, um, if you're in a major you know, uh, recovery deficit, that your sleeping patterns are gonna be disrupted. So, you know, take a good hard look at your sleeping patterns. Ask yourself if they're different. Are you sleeping less? Um, do you find that you're not getting the proper amount of sleep even though you go to bed um, and plan for that sleep? You know, you're restless, you're awake, things like that. So assess yourself for that symptom. That's symptom number two. And symptom number two is a disruption in your sleeping patterns. Symptom number three is also very common and that has to do with your eating patterns, your general appetite. Now, typically when you're training hard, um, you're in that nice training zone, you find that you're hungry, your body's in demand of more calories, um, it needs those calories to rebuild, you're using more calories on a daily basis. And you know, essentially, you're eating fairly often because you're hungry often. Now, whether or not you eat often, whether or not you subscribe to like a one to two meal a day approach or a five to six meal a day approach, the bottom line is that you know your typical approach, you know your typical appetite, and if that's, if that's changing, if you feel like your appetite just isn't there, it's not as strong as it typically is, that's another sign that's gonna lead you to the fact that you're probably overtrained and a deload is something that you should seriously consider. So symptom number three has to do with appetite and if your appetite is down, if you have a loss of appetite on a regular basis, you've got symptom number three as well. One thing about overtraining is that, you know, it really messes with multiple components of your body. It messes with your joints, your muscles, and it also messes with your hormones. Now, it's also gonna mess with those hormones like testosterone. So symptom number four has to do with libido. And if your libido is down, if it's not normal, um, chances are you're also overtraining. There's multiple symptoms for overtraining and a loss of libido or lack of sex drive is gonna be symptom number four. Now it's pretty easy to determine this. Um, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you either wanna you know, get some or you don't. And if you don't, you can pretty much deduce that your sex drive is down your testosterone levels are down, you're not functioning as you properly should, um, you're not feeling like that, like that nice alpha male feel. Uh, you know, nobody wants that, so the deload is important if you want to keep that libido up, keep that sex drive up. Symptom number four, your sex hormones are down, the production is down, and you're going to notice that, and you're not going to like that, you're going to want to stop that, you know, right away. So if you're feeling the effects of symptom number four, you want to seriously consider a deload once again. 
Symptom five. All right, symptom five has to do with how your body feels. It's not really your strength levels, but it's just how, how do your joints feel on a daily basis? Um, do you feel like, do you just have that inherent feeling that they're a little bit weakened, um, that they feel stiff, like you're not really confident in your body's function? If you have any of those things, um, you're probably experiencing symptom number five, and that's just achy joints, um, a general feeling of weakness throughout the body. It's kind of related to how you feel like when you're about to get sick, like when, you, like when you're about to have the flu and you just kind of feel achy and weak. It's not as exaggerated as that, but it basically feels like that initial you know, few hours when you're starting to get that weak, achy feeling of the flu. And you'll just notice that your body doesn't feel up to par. You're not feeling 100%. And you know, things might just ache a little more than usual. And it's, it's noticeable if, if you get deep enough into that recovery deficit and if you get overtrained enough, it's definitely noticeable. And it's not fun. Um, you definitely don't wanna feel it on a regular basis. So if you're feeling symptom number five, definitely it's time to deload. You wanna take that into consideration um, and ask yourself if it's worth it to keep lifting heavy or not, and it's really not worth it. So just take that deload, um, let your joints heal up, and you'll feel so much better when, it's, when, when you come back from that deload and things feel great. All right, so those are five easy to diagnose symptoms of overtraining, and if you have one, two, or all five of those symptoms, a deload is something you should seriously consider. You get those symptoms for a reason. And you know, if you just have one or two of them, chances are if you keep training hard, pretty soon you're gonna have three and then four, and then you're gonna have all five. And then you're gonna, basically gonna be a complete mess. And if you don't deal it at that point, you're just asking for some serious trouble. You're asking for some injury, um, some serious lack of motivation, and maybe you know, you'll just quit lifting because you're not gonna see results from that point on. Um, you're just gonna keep working, you're gonna stay the same, and nobody wants that. I don't want you to have that. So if you're feeling any of those symptoms and it's not normal, it's not typical, it's probably time for you to deload. You should really consider doing that. Take the you know, option number one approach where you just take time completely away from the gym, just hit some low intensity cardio. Or take option number two where you lift weights as, as normal. Um, your frequency stays the same as usual, but you use 50% of your weights and you can also do some cardio in there too, some of that low, um, low intensity steady state cardio. Bottom line, if you feel the symptoms, deload. Uh, I'm gonna finish up this lift day, hit some more sets, and uh, this should conclude the deload series. This was a long series, but there's a lot of good info in this series, and you know, if you take things seriously, you're really not gonna mind listening to all that I have to say and just you know, implementing it in your own training approach. So thanks again, guys. Um, I appreciate it big time. I'm gonna sign off now and get back to work.